Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and with the year-end list finally being out now, my 2023 in review, my best and worst albums of the year, my best and worst songs of the year, and my best EPs of the year, uh, it's time to take your hot takes on those videos in particular, and this time we are looking at specifically the worst of lists, the worst songs, the worst albums of EDM in the year, uh, what should have been on the list, what shouldn't have been on the list, uh, here are your hot takes, let's talk about them. Worst, Sullivan King's Thrones of Blood album. Uh, that one should have landed on the list and you're saying, and I think it shouldn't have. Um, I really don't think it's that bad. Uh, I think there are a lot of shining moments in uh, a track list that is not all that shining. I, I don't think it's a great record. I don't think it's a bad record. I think it's a perfectly mid. I think I gave it a five out of 10. And, uh, yeah, I just, I think there's too much good happening. And like that first record or the first track, watch the crown fall. That is, that's nuts. That song goes hard. I think there's a lot of, you talked about the, the copycat of the space laces. Yes, it's a copycat of space laces, but it works. Uh, it, it works well and it, it sounds solid. And so I just think there's enough good happening that there's no way it lands, uh, on the list. Yes. There's some stuff that I think, aren't too hot, some some moments that I think, not Sullivan King's best, uh, but it's far from its worst. As much as the track is memeable, Dom Dom Yes Yes is nowhere near a bad song. It's definitely got the um what feeling when you listen to it, but honestly, it works as a double-edged sword. It's strange, nonsensical, and just odd. But to me, it at least makes it the whole thing feel memorable and keep it in my mind for months. As much as your ear <laughs> says otherwise, the Dom Dom is a yes yes. <laughs> Um, sure, I mean, I get that, but you can have a meme song and it can still be bad. Um, you can have meme songs that still aren't great. And that's what I talked about on the list. This one was by, um, Rehab in particular. I just think it's, when you, when you do a meme song, you have to do it well. You have to do something that's just a little more interesting and not just, here's this skibbity toilet thing or whatever this, I don't freaking actually know that I'm... I'm I'm still technically a zoomer, but I'm not bad zoomer. I'm on the cusp, and so the the zoomer humor of the skibbity toilet thing, G mod, whatever the dom dom, yes yes. It's you gotta do it. You gotta make it at least decent, right? Coco Moon is actually really good, and probably would have been on my top ten albums year end list if I were still making them. That is fascinating. So Owl City's Coco Moon, I put in my uh, top ten worst albums. That shocks me. I we talked about this a little bit, uh, Land, and the one that made this comment. But um, to to, it's fascinating to me that I would say that it's on a worst, and you would say it's on a best. Like it's nowhere like an in between. Normally, normally, oftentimes it's like, oh, it should have been on the best, or it should have been on the worst. But no, the other person thinks it's just meh, or shouldn't have been on the list, or whatever. But to go from a fully flip flop, of one person says it's best, some one person says it's the worst. Whew, I don't know if I'm missing something. I don't know if you're missing something or if we just have crazy different tastes of music, which I know we don't. So this is weird for me, um, but I just don't think there's any way this lands on the top. And I think a lot of people agree with me uh, in that sense, at least. Although I've also seen a lot of comments of people agreeing that it shouldn't be on this list. So this is a weird one. What do you think? Owl City, Coco Moon, best list, worst list. What do you think? You missed the song Sugar by Weird Genius and Sarah DeWarren uh, on your worst songs list of 2023. Um, no, I don't think I missed it. Uh, I, I've heard the song. I don't think it's the best song in the world. Um, and I would say it's not solid. I actually don't think the song is good. I'm not a fan of it. I like stuff that the other, or I like other songs that these artists have produced. But um, to say it's the worst is... No, uh, it does have a weird beat to it. It has a, a weird style um, and the drop just feels a little muddy uh, in a lot of different areas, but I don't think this lands on the worst list. I don't, I don't think so at all. I, I, my guess is you might just be someone that listens to mainly just Monster Cat and you just, your worst of the Monster Cat year is here and you just think it should land on the list, but there's way worse stuff out there. I don't think the hate on Better Off Alone Part 3 was warranted. As an Alan Walker fan for approximately five years and seeing his general decline in quality over quantity, uh, he has made much more forgettable tracks this year and Better Off Alone actually does somewhat hit that uplifting, happy vibe that it goes for. 
You know, the more that I've uh, looked back on my list retrospectively, I sort of agree with this, actually. I I sort of understand the sentiment here. I don't think the song is great by any means, but um, if anything, I would probably just replace this with the Kim Petras one. I... Uh, the fact that so many people have done this remix is crazy, but I, I sort of understand the sentiment here. Uh, I just, I just have a real hatred towards, uh, <laughs> you know, in, in, I'm just, as I'm speaking it out now, I have a real hatred towards, uh, like the remixing or the remastering of old songs and, and making them for a modern day, the covers of old songs. And I've had not a hatred, but a dislike, a distrust towards Alan Walker's new production. And so I think the two just came to one for me. And I was like, yes, this is the one I have to put on the list. So I think it was more of a melding of a bunch of different things. And it was just, it checked a bunch of boxes for me. And that's why I landed here. But I, I sort of I sort of get the sentiment. Maybe if I were to redo the list, I maybe wouldn't put it on anymore. But who knows? Elenium's album should have been on the worst albums list, in my opinion. That was bad. Uh, I think this is similar to the uh, Sullivan King one, where it's uh, it's got some shining moments, um, but it is not great. Um, it's not great overall. I think it's got a lot of issues. I think stylistically, it has a ton of issues. It just doesn't know what it wants to be. It's a lot of times trying to be the pseudo rock album, even though it it's not. And Elenium's just style of production is faltering and getting weaker and weaker with each new uh, album cycle. And so. I agree that it's not a great record. I don't think it lands in the worst, though, and I don't think it lands in the worst. And this is one of the ones that I easily would have put on if I really did think it was that bad. I just didn't. I just, if anything, I just thought it was mid. I was just un... I was just... I thought so little about the album, I think, is why it didn't land on this list. I, I didn't feel any real hatred towards it. I was just like... I just didn't care. Am I the only one who thought KX5 was a bit meh? Like, I didn't hate it, but it was mostly, like, it felt like a Rufus to Soul ripoff. I guess it could have been worse. They could have been ripping off Marshmallow or something, Lamau. That's, uh, that's, that's pretty funny. And, um, also, can you really... Uh, Dead Mouse and, and Cascade have been around longer than Rufus to Soul? Can, so can they really rip them off? Does it work that way? But that's besides the point. Also, this is technically a best of list. This is one that should have landed on the best of. But um, I'm talking about this here because I actually saw a lot of sentiment online for this one where people said that uh, KX5 was okay. A lot of people I heard say that it shouldn't have been on the list. And they were like, I get it. But like, it was just an okay record. And I can understand that sentiment behind it. I think if anything, the record struggles from uh, just being too linear. I think if anything, the songs sound too similar to one another and there's not that much variation. But I think this is another one that checked a lot of boxes for me that I love Dead Mouse. I love Cascade. I thought House needed a real resurgence of life uh, with all that is going on in the the EDM ecosystem and, and how boring I think house is right now particularly and so this is one that I think also checked a lot of boxes for me and so I felt like I had to add on my best of but um but let's go back to talk about the worst of Hero request part two shouldn't be on the worst albums list let alone as high as it was part two just feels meh overall compared to the first part which is terrible this album feels bland and in my opinion it's not enough to make the worst of list I can agree with ones from Marshmallow, Diplo, and Cheat Codes, and I can agree that the album feels more like a compilation of songs with no unifying theme, but when you have songs like Move On, Cult, The Whistle, and Stars, along with the quality of awful rock trap songs, at least you could say Steve Aoki somewhat improved, even if he went from dreadful to aggressively mid. That's fair-ish. I, I understand the sentiment of this one being better than the first part. I do agree with that. I do think part two is better than part one, but I just think it's... Uh, actually, do I agree with that? I don't actually know if I agree with that as I'm thinking about it. This one, I do understand the, the sentiment of being aggressively mid, and I also know that there's less... I do agree that there's less awful tracks. I think it's more of like a... If there's just like... this, If this album is like a bunch of threes out of ten then the first album was like a bunch of ones, but then like a bunch of fives as well. So like, what is the real balance there? And so I get that. I just think Steve Aoki, if he keeps on this career trajectory, he will always land on this list. I just think that's a given moving forward.